Welcome to the Token Trans Podcast, where two token trans guys talk life, love, and getting high. Grab a J and join us. We do not condone the consumption of illicit activities with anyone under the age of 21. The following episode might contain discussions of things that might make some uncomfortable. In this episode, sexual situations and terminology are going to happen. Listener discretion is advised. There we go. Aaron's taking a big fat hit. Slurp it up, daddy. <laughs> Can you hear it? No, I couldn't hear the bubbles. Okay, good. I was like hoping it wasn't distracting. No, no, it's not distracting ever. So, good. Aaron. <clears throat> yes. How have you been? I've been good. I've been good. We've been busy with work. We just had a super cool event that me and you went to, and I got to hang out with Bo. So that was like, made my whole six months and like helps me get to the next six months we had so much fun at the levitate music yes. festival emotional and it was actually Bo's birthday it was my birthday it was also trans tapes birthday on my birthday five year anniversary to trans tape and wow. 31 anniversary to me <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome Heck yeah that was perfect. Seriously, I had so much fun. We just got to be shirtless in front of thousands of people. And when you think we might, we, you know, that kind of sounds scary because neither one of us have, a, have had top surgery, but it wasn't. And we just danced and we got high and we didn't give a fuck. And we were in the middle of the fucking crowd. All three of us, you, me and Jamie, just shirtless. Just dancing. Just dancing. Just like dancing like you do in the car down the highway when no one's no one's there just yeah it was it was great it was i'm gonna cry if we talk about it anymore <laughs> uh, yeah i mean that's not what this episode's about but that's what i that's how i've been i've been good i've been riding yeah. been riding that high so mm -hmm. absolutely me too you bro been, you know the same <laughs> the same pretty good pretty that good. was pretty recently i mean that was like yeah like two weekends ago yeah, like very recently. So we just saw each other. Oh, and if you want to see the video where uh, we do a chest bump and I yeet Aaron down a fucking cliff, <laughs> yeah, you can check that out on his Instagram. <laughs> Please do. Please do. That that's the perfect hook right there. I mean, <laughs> it's worth it for that alone. You don't have to follow me. Like, just just watch the video and you'll be happy. It'll at least make you smile. I know it's, that. Yeah, it's pretty great. No queers were harmed in the making of that video. It seems like there were, but <laughs> I swear I saved him after. <laughs> yeah. You saw though. You saw him like going after me. So yeah, that's pretty dope. <sighs> we had a lot of a lot of fun. And today we want to make sure we're coming with you guys. And we want to talk with you today about dating while being trans, dating Oof. trans world, being transgender in today's society and dating because that's a tricky a tricky situation it is it is tricky and you know i'd like to start us off i uh so a lot of you may know if you've been following me for a while that i wasn't always Bo. i uh didn't always like my transition wasn't female to male like i guess if you cut out the middle bits it is but if you're including the middle bits, it was female to nothing, to gender fluid, to demi boy, to male. Like it, I went through a lot of identities and during those periods, I was that person. And it's not that I was confused the whole time and I really was a male at that time. I was that. And now I'm male. And Maybe I'll be something else someday. I don't know. But right now I'm affirmed and um, dating while assuming those identities has proven to be quite the debacle. <laughs> so before I, when I first came out as anything, yeah, you know, I, besides woman, right? I, um, at the time I was on disability and I was dating a man named Philip. Um, we were together for four years total and um, he had proposed and I had said, yes, he proposed at a Lego convention. It was very sweet. 
<laughs> he got permission from my grandmother and my grandmother gave him her ring to propose to me with. Yeah. So um, we were together for four years and then I came out as, uh, you know, gender fluid. I changed my name to Lennon. Um, I let him know what the deal was, what that meant. That means that my pronouns would change and I would try to be more masculine on the days that I felt like a boy. And this is the person you were with when you came out as trans. Yes. Okay. When I first, when I first came out as gender fluid. Um, and he just, he tried a little bit, but then he just got mad and he started sleeping on the couch on my boy days. And then he was like, what in the world? He was like, I'm not gay. I can't do this. Oh. And I was like, you know, fair. All right. Makes sense. Okay. You're not gay. That's cool. Got it. <laughs> Got yeah. it. I flipped a script on you. That's fine. Yeah. Um, so that's when I, I moved out. And um, I started dating as Lennon, which was pretty hard and then i met ryan which i talked about earlier so so first of all i use like dating apps i use like okay cupid um i'm pretty sure that's what i started with and using dating apps while trans is like you got you gotta be prepared for what you're gonna experience first of all the transphobia um because your picture is, you know, you're going to be hot and people are going to be attracted to you. And then they're going to go to your profile because you're hot and they're interested in you because you're hot. And then they see your pronouns or your pride flag emoji or something. And then if they're a fucking dick, they're going to feel compelled to message you and tell you what gender that they believe that you are, regardless of what you said. You know, there's a lot of that. And um, so preparing yourself, first of all, I think is, you know, the big thing. If you're not prepared for that, then don't fucking use dating apps. Like, just don't. <laughs> um, it's going to happen. Yeah, it it's going to happen at least once. You know, statistically, there's you're always right. going to be an asshole. Yeah, exactly. I had people like I had my my like radius set to be so many miles away from me but i was still getting messages from people from fucking like idaho fucking 300 miles away from me saying you're a woman <laughs> okay bro like what potato like right go back okay. to your fucking cornfield like you're a woman i don't what do you want <laughs> yeah i know <laughs> no i can call people women too <laughs> <laughs> seriously get out of here fuck so there's that. And then there's also those people who some might know them as chasers. 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 See, see you guys are going to love this. This podcast is perfect because I'm so undereducated on these terms. And Bo <laughs> is on it. Bo knows his shit. And Bo teaches me a lot of shit. So we'll yes. together. A chaser, for those who don't know, is someone who fetishizes you for your gender identity someone who will exclusively hunt down trans people to date them to have sex with them because they are fetishizing you that is also something to watch out for because especially as a a baby trans you might be compelled to believe that it is hard for you to find love and someone approaching you finally being attracted to your identity might seem very appealing at first but it's really not what you need or want <laughs> because you are more than a sexual being and you are a multifaceted person and those kinds of people just really don't treat you like you are those things and we don't need to absorb any bad thoughts that like any of it 
we don't need to believe any of that about ourselves, right? So yeah. no. <laughs> that's another thing to watch out for. <laughs> um, dangers, yeah. you know, physical dangers. People might um, trick you into believing that they're interested and then meet up and then you're putting yourself in a violent situation. Um, safety. Right, safety first. So I just want to talk about how I've experienced all of these things. <laughs> so um, <laughs> the first, you know, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna name everybody by first name. Um, it is their actual first name. And I'm, I'm just not gonna say their last name for legal purposes. Oh, yeah. But I want, if they hear this, I want them to hear it, you know, and I want them to know that I'm talking about them. Right. So, um, <laughs> well, yeah. my, first, my first date that I got on um, OK Cupid. Is this your first date, like out as a trans man or trans in general? Or- yes, this was my first date after I stopped identifying as a woman. Right. I was going by Lennon. My pronouns were they, them, and I identified as gender fluid at the time okay and so in my experience of my gender I would have what I called boy days and girl days and I would bounce between the two as I felt that I were that day and um my pronouns would subsequently change by how I was feeling that day and you know when um, I met this person, his name is Ryan. He's a cis man. Um, he he was like asking me about it and all that kind of stuff. Like, how would how would that work? And I would explain it to him. You know, like you would just ask me, <laughs> and I would just tell you. <laughs> and um, if you made a mistake, you would just correct it. <laughs> and like, it's nothing further than that. And um I he he was the first person that uh showed like actual romantic interest in me and so I did what I mentioned that might happen from a baby trans you know like I was like this is what I'm gonna this is all I'm gonna get I better take it right and um finally someone right I gave this person access to my body and my spirit in ways that he should not have had access to. Um, He was 100% fetishizing me for my gender identity. He would be very gross, (laughs) very gross in the bedroom after I like gave illicit boundaries, you know? And it just, it left me feeling very, very gross. Not how you're supposed to be. Yeah, not how I'm supposed to be. And then when it came time to like, I I had been 100% honest with Ryan that um, my only intention was monogamy. Like I wasn't dating for fun at that time. Like dating is supposed to be fun, but I wasn't like, you know, dating around. When I was dating him, he was the only person I was dating and I expected the same. And um, he had told me over text that that wasn't working for him. And that if uh, I ever changed my mind and wanted to fuck again, that I should reach out to him. (laughs) And change your mind. Right. Like, I was like, that's kind of a really gross thing to say, considering I very blatantly told you my boundaries and what I my intentions and what (laughs) okay yeah it was just bizarre (laughs) so that was Ryan and then um I had this wasn't over a dating app but it was when I was (laughs) engaging in some very high risk behavior when I was 19 years old. Um, I 
I was looking for weed and I met up with someone who I never met before. They were like some, they were, they commented on one of my friend's statuses and they were like, you know, I can hook you up or whatever, but I don't have a car. So you got to meet me here. So I did that. (laughs) I just met him some on some alley, some dark alley parking lot at like midnight And then it was him and some other guy that he never mentioned was coming. And then they were like, okay, get into the car. And then we're going to drive to the place to get the weed. So I did that. I got into the car with two strange men I never met before. Yeah, I can. Yeah. Yeah. I figured you fucking did. I figured (laughs) that's where this was going. And we went back to um, the first guy, Josh's place. And Brad was the guy that went with him. And then we start passing the bong and like, I'm intimidated by these two dudes who were much more avid smokers than me at the time. Now I could probably smoke them through the fucking floor. (laughs) Yeah, but I mean, your tolerance was not it. It was not it. So I was 19 years old. That was the year I started smoking. I did every... Listen, when I turned 19, that was when, like, my bad boy switch flipped on. I did everything you were not supposed to do, and I did it all in when I was 19. Got it all out of the way. <laughs> all my business. <laughs> and then I survived till 20, and that was it. I got it all out of my system. Yep. I am not, for legal reasons, that's a joke. You should not. Uh, yeah, obviously. <laughs> yes, guys. Listen. Don't. Listen, please don't. <laughs> Learn from our mm-hmm. mistakes from this right. entire episode. Like that, that's so important that you learn from what we're telling you because these are important lessons that we can laugh at now, but we didn't we weren't always able to laugh at. Right. Exactly. So these two potheads are passing this bong to me over and over and over again. Oh, and I never really did bong hits before. I really oh, only man. smoked from a pipe. So I'm taking the like fucking. Uh, just sucking it down are, they are right doing hit for hit i ended up doing 12 fucking bong rips come to find out it wasn't weed it was that fucking k-12 shit that i did fucking 12 bong rips of and well yeah guess who had a fucking seizure I bet. Oh my God. I, they didn't tell me what I was smoking. I said I wanted weed. It kind of looked like weed in the bowl. I, <laughs> wait, so wait, so what is K 12? K 12, um, you know, back, back before there was all this marijuana legalization, you know, oh, there sure. was, they were making, they were like trying to create a legal weed something that you could smoke to get you high that wasn't on the government's radar yet. So there was no actual laws about it. And they would sell this stuff at um, like down at the boardwalk. Mm -hmm. Like if you went to the Atlantic city boardwalk or um, like Delta eight. Well, Delta eight is an actual, is actual marijuana. It's actual like, but back then it was like an, it was like, it was like shit. It was like leaves that they would spray Oh. with this chemical and sell it in, in baggies and you smoked it and they said that it was um it started with an s fuck i can't remember what they said it was but all of these boardwalk employees had like t-shirts that say like we sell oh my gosh the t- it wasn't sativa it was something else but um like other people called it like spice oh okay i see i see and uh k-12 um anyway it it's not good for you and it eventually became illegal because it's not good for you (laughs) right and um they didn't tell me that and they were fine and i smoked 12 hits and then i started having like a grand mall seizure like i couldn't control my body but i don't think i don't think it was an actual seizure i don't know what happened because they wouldn't take me to the hospital <laughs> they oh my gosh. i was i'm pretty sure with if it was an actual seizure that i would have been like um not aware of what was going on you know yeah. i think i 
you know, I don't know a lot about seizures, but I'm pretty sure you become like unconscious or something. And, you know, you don't, you're not fully aware of what's going on, but I was fully aware of what was going on. Like I was awake and I was able to talk, but I was just like, it was like, I was having a seizure. I couldn't stop shaking my entire body and all my muscles were all like, like my jaw was clenched. Like all my muscles were activated and tight and I could not stop shaking and I couldn't stop it. There was nothing I could do. I had zero yeah, control I mean, over my body. I didn't know what was happening. Too far in at that point. Yeah. And um, the only thing that stopped me shaking was when Brad had grabbed my foot. He like, he like took his hand and like grabbed the underside of my foot like that and like squeezed it. And for some reason that stopped me from shaking. But then I found out that the only reason he touched my foot is because this fucking freak had a foot fetish and he was trying to cop a feel while he thought I was incapable of like oh my fucking god I know dude I know <laughs> holy shit I know and then he fucking played it off like it was something and it gave him an excuse to hold on to my feet because it was the only like when he let go I started shaking again so he just kept holding on to my feet and it was just like I listen don't just don't just don't get into cars with people you don't know the moral don't, of the story don't smoke don't if don't. you're not sure <laughs> if you're not sure what it is don't smoke don't smoke if it if you're not a bong hitter don't hit bongs with people don't, you don't do know. it just don't try don't. to keep up don't, don't try, try to keep, to keep up. up do don't. your own thing do you know oh. It. Well, just, oh. oh my god Bo. yeah it was horrible that's odd horrible. yeah so um there's that so be safe right be safer safe. than Bo was right but okay so i learned my lesson because yeah. um I'm, I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit and um talk about shane i was with shane right before tim i think you might remember i don't know <laughs> no anyway, way shane and i met on okay cupid and i learned my lesson okay i told my aunt where i was going and i shared my location with her and i told him before we met up before shane and i met up i was like I'm going to be sending a picture of you. And also I wanted a picture of your, I'm going to take a picture of your license plate when you come and pick me up and I'm going to send those to my aunt. And she is aware of my location at all times, just so you know. And he was like, okay, yeah, that's totally fine. And I was like, okay, cool. If he had ever, if he had said anything else besides that, I would yeah. not have met up with him. And like, oh, all right, no. Right. Yeah. So he came and picked me up. I took a picture of his license plate. He was cool with it. And, you know, sent a picture to my aunt. I ended up being with him for three years. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why now. I don't know well, why. <laughs> but Everybody I, has those people. Yeah. Most people have those people, I would say. I think so. And um, I guess I want to save the rest for, for a little a little later i think it's your turn aaron <laughs> so, <laughs> All right. so what what um like how old were you when you first started dating or like had your first partner i i think everyone's had like your elementary school kicks like obviously that's like that doesn't count <laughs> um, middle school is when you really start to like develop like these emotional connections to people and like you really start to think about or at least for me really think about like and start into the dating world I I I first my I first my first love I guess I dated a woman a girl that was on my softball team Ooh, softball yeah, I was a catcher. Um, mm. we, was she the receiver? Get out of here. <laughs> Come on, no. She was, <laughs> she was a pitcher. Uh, <laughs> I, it's get the, get a focus, but we're trying to tell a story. So she was the pitcher and you were the catcher. I need to finish the story. Okay, okay. 
I have to stay focused here, Bo. Or you're not going to get anything else. Okay, okay, okay. So, I have... Okay, so... I So, I started, I started liking this girl in my softball team. Mm-hmm. And I could tell that she had started liking me back. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we came from very different demographics. I... Like, a different world, really. Like, she was really popular and how to like you can tell she was like well off and um like like went to like one of the nicest schools in town and I did not uh I was I was not popular I that was like not even close so we so we automatically were not were opposites but like we just we we liked each other and we started getting close and we wanted to be together and eventually we started dating and then throughout like all of our softball stuff and um we would see each other like on the weekends because we didn't go to the same school or in middle school or high school or anything um and then and it, it the hardest part i think for us was coming out and like being comfortable as like in your identity like at the time like I at first I I did pray it away but Mm -hmm. and and she also tried to pray it away so we did Mm -hmm. that stage together Mm -hmm. trying to like wait no this isn't you know that whole thing me and Bo have a whole different episode for that but um but yeah so at first we had to we had to battle that like moral situation then we had to battle like you know coming out and I was out and she was not and in that situation it's very very tricky because your feelings are real but you know your decisions are also real in the way that you know you conduct yourself and and it just it it didn't make for a good um situation and good foundation for a relationship um we did like see each other off and on through for like five years but we never it it wasn't able to be just because I was so far ahead. And, and when you're trying to convince other people, like your like family members and best friends that you're not gay, you can't always associate with that person. So you kind of have to like, almost ignore them, Mm -hmm. you know, and like, keep that segregation line or people are going to think, Hey, maybe they're gay too. Yeah. So it was, it was a very, it wasn't, it wasn't the situation, but um, so in that, in that, that was my very first experience in the dating world um and then i we ended up breaking up right before like my junior year and i dated um one of those people that you what did you say shane for the three years is that what you said yeah yeah i had one of those i i I had i dated someone i don't mean one of those i don't want to use names but I dated someone like that uh, uh-huh. for three years, and it was also not it. it. I was, for once, I was unconditionally loved, and I felt what it was like to feel love from another person and feel like be open and out and about and hold hands and, um, you know, just be able to be and be with someone. Uh, so I thought I had to choose between, you know, my first situation of being in love Mm -hmm. but not reciprocating that love getting that that love back Mm -hmm. and then I had that situation where I could tell she was in love with me and and you know did and and wanted to be with me but I had to be honest with myself um after three years you know probably longer than I should have but yeah you know you learn your lessons and I was just honest about not being able to you know be like when you're not meant to be with someone and you're not in love with them it shows like after a while you know you start to fire you argue like it shows up in your relationship so you know to keep things healthy we we broke up and then I moved to Tennessee to be closer to my Nana in 2016 and Mm -hmm. my uh eighth grade one of my summer my summertime uh flings you know Mm -hmm. uh we spend all the summers together so I moved back here in 2016 to Tennessee and Kayla had already knew that I was out as trans because um, I I had met her in 20. Gosh, she always hates me for saying the wrong year. <laughs> it's 2010 or 2011. You can always edit this part. 
yeah yeah <laughs> and just so, put in the right ear <laughs> yeah yeah because I met her and so that was yeah so that was perfect and <laughs> I'll use that um no that year yeah I met her pretty much I, I met her in eighth grade so whatever year that was mm -hmm. um so we had like a connection but I was a chicken and I had my head in in a different my head and heart were in a different like relationship and she was you know we were in a different world so it was just like a summertime I would always see her every summer and then I moved here in 2016 and she knew I was trans so she immediately knew who I was and her family remembered me which was cool to have like like memories beforehand but also show up and her mom be like oh my gosh it's Aaron like we haven't seen you since for this many years you know what I mean like what's yeah. up like and and be Aaron and he him off the bat it was it was really cool for for her family and uh Kayla just helped me see that I could be loved like I could feel the love like I can be loved unconditionally and mm -hmm. also love someone unconditionally mm -hmm. instead of settling for one or the other mm -hmm. in that situation so now obviously you, you don't know Kayla is my wife yeah they got married last year yeah we got married in December it's July so we're starting we're getting we're getting a few months under our belt but we've been dating for five and a half years so mm. we've been together a really long time but yeah uh, but yeah everyone every single those are my three major relationships mm -hmm. really in the dating world uh I you know I had I had flings and things in between there but um nothing that was nothing that was as big and as lesson learning I would say as those for sure well you're the the person that you mentioned before Kayla mm -hmm. the three-year one yeah where you like didn't love her or anything right um and then also your first one where she didn't or she, yeah she wasn't out so she kind of that was Shane in one person in one okay. okay so I was with him for three years and also he wasn't out to his parents so I couldn't be out to his parents right and at first I was like okay this isn't like his coming out should be his coming out that's understandable I need to be patient and give him time so that he can do this on his own terms and then a year passed and I was like when are you gonna do this? So tricky, and you can't rush it because those I can't. People, those people are not like like my first relationship that she was not ready. Yeah, she had sisters that were really close. She had family that were like, I mean, they like hovering, like really mm -hmm. close. Like even if people would guess, you had to be like opposite sides of the field. Like we couldn't be in the dugout at the same time because we didn't want to like make people think other ways. And that's mm -hmm. that's just you don't want to be someone's dirty little secret, you know? Yeah. You to be not a secret and exactly it doesn't line up at the same time you can't force them you know to come out and you can either you know say hey maybe we're we can try this later you know and maybe you'll save a few years off of your yeah. life and <laughs> from i i uh i waited way too long for him to do that and his parents loved me and like they knew that my name was Bo, but they didn't know my pronouns. They didn't know right. that I was a man. Right. And because uh, I hadn't started testosterone yet, I started testosterone like um, in 2018 and we broke up in 20, last year? Last year or the year before? I think it was the year before, 2020. Yeah. yeah. So I started um, and then we moved in together in um, in 2020. And we lived together for for like a, a few months. And like you said, it, it was just we were just fighting all the time. And yeah. and it got to a point where we were both kind of like dependent on each other. Oh, my gosh. Same for but rent and things oh, like I that either right now this is the same that's why yeah yeah so because we were we were living together at the time and I didn't have a very good job at the time this is before I started working for trans tape um I wasn't paid enough to cover rent on my own so 
I, I kind of needed him to help out, even though I was making a lot more than him. And um, I was also covering his expenses, like almost entirely. Uh, I thought like the way that he made me his parent, basically, once he moved out of his parents and moved in with me, it was just really gross. Yeah. Um, and that's when I started, I was like, this, like, you Same need thing. to come out to your parents who don't even live with them anymore. I'm getting chin hair. I'm not going to shave it to go see your mom. Right. So you like, <laughs> right. Yes or no. Yeah. Yeah. And he, he wouldn't. So I, there was a, a point where I was like, you know what? Let's just open up the relationship. Like, and also he wasn't, we didn't, we were, okay. We were together for three years, right? We hadn't had sex in two and a half years. Okay. Wow. Yeah. yeah and I was like, what's like, what's the deal? What's different? What's changed? That's and he wouldn't, he wouldn't like, it was always, a, I don't know where I'm working on it. And then like, okay, what, so what, what are you working on? Like, what is it? Communi is, communication is big. right. He would not communicate with me at all for I'm anything. Honest. He wouldn't. And I think it was because I genuinely think he wasn't attracted to me, but because I was taking care of him, he didn't want to end things. Um. So, um, but of course he wouldn't say that because I would have ended things. And, then, and I stuck around for that motherfucker. Too long. Too long. And then um, we were, we opened up the relationship. Um, he started dating other people. And by dating, I mean having sex with other people. And so I was like, okay, so you're having sex. So like, why not with me? Like, right. what is the issue with obviously me? Obviously, it's not a you. Right. It's obviously not a you thing. You're getting it up. You're get. you're get, yeah. <laughs> right. Everything like, is operating. Right. So yeah. like, I was just like, this is very funny and not funny. Ha ha. Funny, weird, you know? <laughs> and um, so at that point, I was also dating two other people besides him, uh, Ray and Tim. And um, after a while, I was like I'm getting everything I needed from Ray and Tim. Yeah. And wow. I didn't, I was like, I, and I, I had gotten a promotion at the job that I was at mm. and I could afford everything on my own. And I was like, I, I sat him down on the bed and I was like, look, I, I think we both know that this isn't working. I think we just need to break up. And he was like, yeah, okay, that's cool. And I was like, all right, look, you don't oh. got to move out right away, but you do got to move out eventually. I'm not going to make you homeless, but, you know, start, start, start looking. Them. Right. <laughs> so yeah. um, he moved out and um, that was, I, man, I had never, that was the first time in my whole life I had ever initiated a breakup and God, it felt good. <laughs> Really? Oh my God, did it relief. feel good. It was relief. Yes. Yeah. It was like I cut off a piece of fucking matted hair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, lighter. I did. I felt much lighter. I was saving more money because I wasn't spending it on his car payment. Imagine <laughs> that. Yeah. That's and it, wild. Yeah. It was, man, if someone won't like come out <laughs> for your you know not not for your sake it's just like if you're out don't date somebody who's in the closet just don't just yeah. don't it's you gonna that healthy boundaries like let them decide like hey like we can't continue this the way we're doing it right now so either i'm i'm gonna need you to like take a leap of faith with me and I will go through this with you. I'll hold your hand, you know, mm -hmm. like I'll hold you when you cry. Or we need to decide that maybe later when you're in a better, more comfortable situation with yourself, then yeah. we can revisit that. Exactly. Down the road, possibly. Right. 
and if it's meant to be, it'll come back around because it, it, it will. But, you know, if, and if it's not, it does. then it won't. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Shane and I never talked once after he moved out. It was just. Yeah, that sounds so much better. We did very, not. Like a very peaceful breakup. I, my, mine was so not, peaceful. Mine was not that. I, I was like at the very end of my mental health. Like I oh, held no. on to the very end. To the point where I was like, I need to move to my Nana because she has mental health experience. Because oh I was gosh. so just so negative. I was crying every day. We were screaming and fighting every day. But mm. like, but we were dependent on each other in a emotional way. Oh. So we were best friends, mm-hmm. but I wasn't in love, and mm. she was. So we, so when we broke up, I knew I was breaking her heart. I knew I was changing the 50 years that she was planning on wanting with me and I was like wait that's not right wait that's not right and you have and it, at first you you like you want to settle you know you're like I like I, I'm being loved unconditionally like my pa- like my parents aren't giving me that right now right my family's not giving me that right now like why would I screw that up why would I give that up and I just reasoned with myself till the end to where mm-hmm. it, just, it was just a little too much and um and I, I left, you know, I was like, I, I, I had to drive three hours to my dad's house because I lived far away. So the whole three hour drive, I'm like driving with all my stuff, bawling my eyes out, like screaming, smashing, like smashing my hand. Like I probably shouldn't have been driving because I was so emotional. But oh I was the God. whole drive, I was just bawling and like yelling. I was so upset at myself for like hurting someone else in that way. And it was tricky, you know, like, so like, not only are these things that we experience emotional as like trans people, like inside of our own mental health and our own body, as we discover that we may be more than lesbians, maybe there's something else that I'm, I'm trying to suppress right now or whatever, or that that's been on my mind. Um, And inviting another person into that space it's going to be tricky because mm-hmm. it's always a fluid journey. Like you said, like, like you're, like you said, like you went through multiple identities, like, and I, you know, I was lesbian for a long time and I was super scared to jump from that one and change. Cause I mean, you're changing, you come out as one time and then you don't want to be, you don't want to be like judged. You're like, you know, you're worried about what other people think, even though we, you know, we were told we shouldn't, but we're natural. We're human. We're going Mm -hmm. to sometimes. Mm -hmm. So it's, you have to be very careful when introducing people into your life and into into your body, your heart and your physical body. If you were not in a space to where, you know, your own heart and your own mental health and being self aware enough to know that that's where you are. And also the physical boundaries that you know with yourself like you right. know where you don't want to be touched you know mm-hmm. what you don't want right you have don't to- let someone convince you otherwise yeah. you know where you your boundaries are and you need to yeah. find those boundaries so you can con- convey that information to other people so they can respect it yeah or, or leave right amen yes and you know um so after I mentioned that while I was with Shane, when we opened it up and I broke up with him because I was also dating Ray and Tim. Right. Um, They all knew about each other. We were, Ray was also Polly at the time and uh, Tim wasn't dating anybody, but he also didn't care that I was dating anybody. Um, You know, he was just like, you know, just communicate with me, use condoms because we're all using condoms. I'm like, yeah, you know, obviously. Yeah. And um, right. So, um, I broke it off with Shane and, um, Ray, I was dating, he's also trans and he was my first trans boyfriend and. Oh, I didn't know you had a trans boyfriend. Yeah. It was very, it was short lived, but. Right. My God, was it amazing. Amazing. I, I thought you were was, gonna say emotional. <laughs> it was emotional. it was emotional. It was very emotional. It was so intense. It was so emotionally intense. It was yeah. I firmly believe that if you're trans, you should date trans people. <laughs> I think that 
it is, it was just, man, I'm having a hard time finding the words for it. He was so loving and so in tune with my needs, what I wanted. He was my, I was his first thought in the morning and his last thought when he went to bed and I knew it and he made me know it. And he was honest about his feelings truly which was beautiful he cried with me when he wanted to cry and he communicated his frustrations when he needed to and that helped me because I could actually you know correct myself he asked what felt good you know yeah. and oh my god he was so hot <laughs> he's so hot and like god sex with a trans person it just hits different <laughs> and so, i'm just saying i've told you before aaron that i love going down on trans men yes, mm. you have it is scrum diddly umptious i just have to say <laughs> <laughs> it is if one you, of the top 10 you guys have experiences too as listeners drop a comment below have you dated a trans person what are your experiences? Boy pussy is superior oh, pussy. <laughs> he just, you guys know Bo. He just goes after it. He's oh, it's so this good. Is what it is. I'm going to say it. This is what, <laughs> that's, that's what I love about you. I love you too. <laughs> so we, it, Ray and I only lasted three months. Um, I had realized probably a little bit too late that what, I like though I did I did love him I I mistook my like I don't want to say it was oh man it wasn't not love and it wasn't not romantic love and it wasn't not sexual love I did love him I loved him deeply but at a point I realized that I the love that I felt for him was different than how I would feel for someone that I wanted to stay with long term, if that makes sense. I think it's possible to love somebody like and care for them a thousand percent because and not be in love with them. Yeah. You can well, love them and not be in love. I don't even want to say that I wasn't in love with them because I, I oh, really okay, feel okay. like I was. Right. And I don't think, so right. right. It just wasn't right. After a certain point, I was like, it might've been us moving so fast. We did move very fast emotionally. We both pretty much said that we loved each other the first time we met. <laughs> Right. And um, we were talking about, we were looking at apartments together. Like we were talking about moving in together. We were only dating for three months. I went to go I, see apartments with him. Right. Like, I was like, wait, I'm making whole entire life decisions on this three month interaction. I need to slow the hell down. Yeah, wait a <laughs> second here. Wait a second. Yeah. And yeah. I had, um, he had also expressed wanting to be monogamous with me. So that also made me think like, am I ready to dump Tim? And I, I, I don't think that I was, and I didn't want to have that conversation with him. So I kind of ghosted him. I didn't kind of ghosted him. I ghosted him. I ghosted, ghosted him. Who? Tim. Tim, I ghosted Tim. I've oh Tim. And Aaron, you're gonna think such awful things about me when I tell you this because I know how much you love Tim. No, it's all right. It's all and right. And I, you know, I don't think I'll ever forgive myself, and I don't know how Tim did. We all have those things, Bo. I, I had told Tim I love you kind of early on when we started dating, and he just gave me a kiss. And he was like, I don't think I'm there yet, but I, I like you a lot and I love spending time with you and stuff. And I was like, okay, that's great. Yeah. He didn't. I was so respectful, you guys. You have. <laughs> he, did, 
<laughs> he I just say that. Go ahead. He didn't make me feel bad for saying it. And, you know, he was like, it's great that you love me. I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I feel loved, you know? And yeah, he just wasn't sure if that's what he felt yet. And he didn't want to say that because he didn't want to be dishonest with me. And I appreciate yes. that so much. Yes. And I was, I went over to his, his apartment, this apartment that I now live with him in, um, I would come see him, you know, on the weekends or whatever. Um, I went over to his apartment for what I was planning on being the last time to break up with him in person. And I couldn't do it. Um, so then I stayed the night hoping that I could do it in the morning before I left for work. And I was getting ready for work and he was sleeping and I just, I couldn't do it. So I was about to leave. I was walking through the living room, walking to the door and he, he woke up and got out of bed and he was like, Hey, come here. And I was like, okay, I'm just, I was just leaving for work. And he's like, yeah, just come here real quick. And then he grabbed my face and he looked at me in the eyes for, for like a couple seconds while he was smiling at me. And he said, Hey, I love you. And that was the first time he said, I love you. And it was when I was planning on breaking up with him. And that was the last time oh, I oh spoke or saw Timothy in three months. Oh I ghosted him God. for three months the day he told me that he loved me. And oh, that's tough. And that he still followed me on Instagram where I was posting about Ray and how much in love I was. Oh my and he, he, he saw them and he sent me a DM and he was like, hey, look, I, I know that I see that you're really happy and I'm, I just want you to know that I'm glad that you're happy and, you know, it's okay. We're not on bad terms. I understand. Mm -hmm. And I responded, you know, I was like, I was like, I'm sorry. <laughs> I just didn't know how to, I just didn't know how to do it. Yeah. No, I loved no. him so much. Like breaking up with Shane was so easy because that's what was supposed to happen. Right. But Breaking up with Tim did not feel like that's what was supposed to happen. Oh my gosh. Oh and yes. My so <laughs> Yeah. I oh God, it broke my heart to read that message, Aaron. <laughs> oh my gosh, I bet. And then I I kind of like got back in touch with Tim and we started talking again. And I was like wow, I really miss you. And he was like, I really miss you too. And I was like, would you like want to, would you ever want to try again? If, you know, I became available or did I fuck that up? And he was like, I, I'd be willing to try again. We might have to relearn to trust each other, but I'd be willing to try again. And I was like, okay. And then that's when I realized I had to break up with Ray. Yeah. I yeah. wanted to, Tim never had a problem with me dating other people, but it was at that point I knew I wanted to be with only Tim. Right. He was fulfilling me in all the ways that I needed. I didn't need anybody else. That yeah. isn't to say, like, I was, I, I think polyamorism works for people that it works for. It's a wonderful thing. When, right. when I, when I had multiple partners, it was great because none of the one partner was reaching all of my needs. With three partners, I was having all of my needs met. And right. then eventually over time, a single partner started being enough. Right. So um, that is where I ended up with Tim. We got back together. I broke up with Ray um, in a very indirect way. I pretty much told him that I needed a break. And then... Um, <laughs> the break just never ended <laughs> right I mean sometimes yeah and he I felt really bad because I knew Ray loved me so much and he he thought that it was him you know he was like what did I do just tell me what I did so I can fix it because you know I want to be a good partner for my next person or whatever and I'm like it wasn't you like being with yeah. you was amazing I loved every second Right. It was wonderful. I loved 
everything about him. I loved that he was trans and could understand me on a level that none of my cis boyfriends can. I, I loved that he was familiar with my anatomy because it was similar to his and that he knew like instinctively kind of what felt good and that he asked. Right. (laughs) Yeah. And listens. Yeah. And yeah. And my comfort was his priority. And you don't all, all, you don't always get that with cis people. And you see other people that are uncomfortable in their relationships that are miserable in their marriages. And you think, well, this is better than that being miserable. Right. I could be that miserable or I could, I could settle for a situation that wouldn't be terrible that I would, I could see myself trying. Right. Yeah. And, and Ray gave me a great example of what I should expect in a man. And I hope he's doing great. <laughs> We're yeah. friends on Facebook. I, I mean, he's a great guy. Um, but Tim and I have been together for about two and a half years now. Um, we've lived together for about a year. We just re-signed our lease and we're going to be moving together next year. <laughs> we have two guinea pigs and we are monogamous and we are very much in love. Oh, <laughs> They really are the cutest, you guys. Like, <laughs> they are the cutest. Tim is so respectable and articulate and just a just a very just nice little handsome guy. And I he mean is. little and he's like four feet taller than me. He's, <laughs> yeah, he's, he's like six four. But he still is like little Tim. Like you still <laughs> yeah. want to pick him up and put it in your pocket. And I'm like five seven. Like he's <laughs> way taller than me. But he's just little Tim. He's just so he's so sweet. And I love he's you guys so together. Sweet. You guys like complete each other you're like honest you you know they'll be like hey we're gonna go take a nap we need to recharge together and i love that about their boundaries like you guys are awesome together yeah he's my boy did i ever tell did i tell you about did i did i talk about how tim and like our first date tim and my first date yet i don't think so no okay this is when i used tinder tim and i met on tinder And this was, like I said, I was also dating Shane at the time. This was just because we weren't having sex. I like, I'm a sexual being, Aaron. I needed the D. So gotcha. I was, that's what my intention was with uh, Tinder. So my bio at the time, Aaron. All right. I'm ready for it. Reflected my intentions very clearly and directly. Hey, communication. That's all people can ask. Yeah. So my bio said, and I quote, fuck me like you own me. <laughs> and that's the end. That's, and that's that, all well, that, that was the initial part. But then it also said I'm a trans man and I have a pussy. If that's a problem, move along or something like that. Very I'm boom. like, I, this is what get, it is. Get rid of the issues, you next, know? <laughs> next, next, next. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> saving me some time. So Tim messages me. Well, this is what my bio said. And then Tim messages me. My first message from Tim was, <laughs> if you were a soup, what kind of soup would you be? Oh, I get, I get God, so I was many. So ready to hear that answer, and I had not what I expected. I got so <laughs> many messages, like just straight dick pics, sure. just like Let's all kinds go. of right, yeah, like fucking, and which I was down for, you know, like I opened the floodgates for that. That's what I was there for. And then Tim sends me, "What kind of soup would you be?" <laughs> and I said, "Broccoli cheddar." Oh, and he said, "Yeah, I could see that." <laughs> And then we just started talking that was and it. we started talking about a lot of stuff like video games and like movies are, you know, just getting to know each other. And then he was like, Hey, would you want to meet in person? Um, it was February. It was February 2nd. He was like, Hey, do you want to meet in person? They have a, he, he was, he got tickets to see some, uh, these like animated shorts in a theater, yeah. like yeah. these award award winning animated shorts. Uh-huh. So he got a couple tickets for us for February second, and I kind of got cold feet the last second, and I was like, I can't, I have a work thing. And then he was like, oh, okay, no big deal, you know, whatever. 
And then I was like, you know what? I'll go. Okay, so, I don't so have a work thing. I ended up showing up anyway the same day. We ended up not going to the movie thing. We sat on his couch and watched Dragon Ball for three hours. I sat on one side of the sofa and he sat on the other side and we did not touch. And I was like, I was like this on the like just turned away on the side of the sofa just for three hours watching Dragon Ball until I eventually said, you want to cuddle? Aww. He just, he didn't try anything. Yeah, he was just when you're- He was just letting me get comfortable. And- Wow. He was like, he listened to my boundaries. I had some pretty strict boundaries. I told him like, for some reason- cis guys when you go down on them they want to hold your fucking head down or like push your head or something right. and as someone with a respiratory disease <laughs> that ain't I'm gonna like, work <laughs> don't hold my head down <laughs> i need to be able to breathe when i need to be able to breathe Trust i don't want to trigger an asthma attack on your fucking dick Trust like, me. Yeah. yeah so that was one of my things like don't hold my head down as a matter of fact don't even touch my head don't worry about Just it let me do my thing yeah. talk to me if you need to like <laughs> and he didn't he didn't touch my head at all and it was yeah. and he listened and he listened and yeah. he asked if I had a good time you know and I had no problem using a condom he had no problem with me dating other people he was super funny and just sweet and his his voice is just so soft and nice it is it is yeah oh and he was okay with me telling my friends like his address, sending his picture because he didn't have a car. I had my own car, so I, I drove there. I felt a little right. bit safer, right. but I also had a friend on standby who I sent my location to and we had a secret code yeah. for me to text her if I needed her to come escort me or right. call the cops or something, you know? Yeah. So um, I didn't have to- people. Yeah. <laughs> I was safe with Tim, but I wanted to make sure I was going to be safe with Tim because I wasn't sure. Um, so, yeah, that was. <laughs> That's so. It started off as a hookup. We just weren't like, that was the intention for us to just be each other's, you know, booty call. Yeah. And then I told him I loved him. <laughs> and then you stayed. And then I broke his heart and then came back. And we've been together for two and a half years. Hey, that's amazing, though. Yeah. That's just meant to be. And, like, it's sometimes, you know, you have hiccups. Like, there's never going to be a relationship where you don't have something that you have to overcome. Like, there's always going to be something to overcome together. I went home and learned my lesson. And then when I when I got to the, the my wit's end, you know, with my mental health and realized that that person was not for me. I moved to Tennessee to be with my Nana. I lived with my Nana and Kayla still lived five houses down from my Nana. And I, I went down there and just knocked on the door late one night. And her mom was like, Aaron, she's upstairs. And I was like, awesome take me there so she took me she led me upstairs and like i i hung back because i had i had put these like snapchat stories like hinting that i was coming home and i was moving mm -hmm. back to tennessee and i was like letting it go i was starting over like i was just wanted to and kayla was like my like my only friend in tennessee so i was and of course like i i loved her i i knew like we would always say like i love you like not love but like say like spell it weird or whatever mm -hmm. when we were like when we would see each other and stuff so but i was excited to see her she was one of my best friends i would call her if there was like things going down in my other relationships and she oh would like God. straight up give me advice like, oh yeah and i was just like I, I i i just thought it was impossible so when I moved back to Tennessee and her mom was like, she's upstairs. And I had been dropping these hints on the stories that I might be moving back home. Um, nothing like so subliminal. You would think that they're not even, they're not even like real messages. Like only Kayla would know 
oh like God. with those emojis and like quoting our song like in our in my, like lyrics in my story and like stuff like that and then I, I I she like so Kayla's mom leads me up the stairs and I hang back to the like I didn't tell Kayla I was coming like she could be like indecent or whatever so I'm like standing back and mom's what a gentleman mom mom knocks and is like um and Kayla you uh, Kayla someone's here to see you and apparently she was studying for a test that night and had fell asleep studying oh my god and her, that and her mom was there and w- like woke her up and was like you, you, like someone's here to see you can you want me to let him in and i think she thought i was her friend um jasmine and so she was like yeah yeah go ahead and so kayla's mom opens the door and she like saw me and didn't know that i was coming at all so i surprised oh my her oh my um, god she wasn't that surprised because she got my subliminal hits but i hints but i never i never confirmed anything so when she saw me she literally she gave me like this giant hug and every time i came to saw came to see her in the summertime we would like hug each other like just hug the shit out of each other like pressure mm-hmm. like you know those like tight good hugs and my yeah. man would peek out the window and be like that's not a friend hug eric if you come look at this i don't think that's a friend hug like you could just tell that we were just like and she Ooh. she literally jumped on me she's like like i like picked her up and was like hugging her and her mom was like right there at the door like seeing the whole thing and oh. uh, but and like so we hug and then we like pull back and she's like we're like looking at each other right in the eyes and her mom's like right there and and I don't, I don't know. We were just both so excited to see each other, and so we just like hugged each other again. And we sat, oh. we, we sat and talked till like two in the morning. Oh my I'm God. pretty sure she overslept and had to and missed her test and had to like reschedule her test for later <laughs> <the> day. <laughs> and oh my God! And I, we just stayed together. Like she, she saw my coming out post on social media, so she knew my name and pronouns. Her family were up to date on it. I wasn't. I wasn't on testosterone when we dated, when we got together. So mm-hmm. I looked very different. I, uh, I, I was a lot smaller. I was like 80 pounds smaller. Uh, I was like, had no facial hair. Like I like, I was just, I was just a tiny little, a baby trans like, yeah. in the world. Just like, I'm going to go make a new life for myself with my Nana and screw everyone else. So I did. And I just started working at McDonald's and moved in with Kayla and like stayed in her room and we paid for like rent for her room for a while. And we also looked at uh, places. We looked at, um, we looked at like, cause her house had so many people living at like her brother and her, her brother's um, uh, wife and her brother's kid and her mom and her dad and both of us and her kid. So there was like two of them. There was like a 16 and like a two, three-year-old and they were like in Kayla's bed, like close oh. to Kayla. Like Kayla was practically watching them most of uh-huh. the time and um, really assisting the parents while they were sorting some like tough, like life situations out. Kayla was uh-huh. really stepping up and being that like aunt. So after oh. like a month of being together, she she told me like, I don't know if we can be like, be together right now like I'm so busy like I don't even have time to go on a date with you like you see like how crazy it is here like if you don't this is like before I had moved all the way in she and she was like I you know if you like I have this life situation going on right now these girls need me and if you want to circle back and do this again later and I was like hell no like I'm the oldest of 10 children you are like I can do the kids thing like we can do the kids thing so we pretty much just like played house Oh, for the first like four or five months of our relationship, like I would take um, her niece to school in the mornings, uh, like to high school, like drop her off at high school, pick her up breakfast on the way. And like Mariah would, would be like three sleeping in the bed with us, like in between us. Like so it was a very interesting first couple of months. And Kayla and I had always taken things so slow that it built an incredible foundation of like respect and almost like nervousness like that stayed like you like I always like I still get butterflies and we've been together five years just because it's just it's just so it's for real it is for real it's it's perfect I and and Kayla is the definition like she showed me how to 
to be loved and what that looks like and to like set boundaries for myself yeah people that it's hard to set boundaries for and would just support me and I was worried that coming like starting testosterone that she would like not like the way that I looked you know oh. like I didn't know if I was gonna like the way that I looked I was like I could get I it, I could get uglier mm -hmm. that's a possibility <laughs> right. no like as a transfer like people think that like some like some transphobes may think that people just jump into this and they're just like I'm gonna do it. I was looking at it at every angle. I'm like I read every single side effect. I was like I don't want hair. I don't want a beard. Like right. what if I don't look good with a beard? I'm like trying to like use those filters and like yeah. see what it looks like. And I'm like I don't. I what if I don't like it? I was like baby, what if you don't like it? And she was like, I, like if you, it's up to you. Like if you like it, I'll like it kind of right. thing. like Kayla doesn't really know like she was also just trying to be supportive like right. she didn't know for sure if me transitioning would make me look like make her feel more attracted to me or less right. attracted to me like statistically I'm a numbers guy statistically <laughs> that is a possibility and you have right. to admit that you know <laughs> because I'm just a worst case scenario guy I've had some trauma you know we all have <laughs> we all have our stuff that's fine. Yeah. so yeah so she was just very respectful and um yeah, and now we both work for TransTape somehow. And she is also my work wife. And she is Bo's work wife. <laughs> That's true. They talk all day long. <laughs> and uh, she she got her bachelor's degree. She finished college, you know. Uh, so proud of her. And, um, yeah, so she, is, she helps us and makes sure our grammars are all straight and makes sure our shipping and order stuff is situated. And now we all get to work together. And... Uh, it's perfect. It is perfect. So perfect. I love I love you both so much. We love you guys. You. You're my best friends. Seriously, same. Like I don't talk to anybody else more than you. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of I'm kind of not too keen on marriage. Yeah. Um Tim wants to get married eventually like for himself as like a like a right. life goal. He, yeah he would like to get married yeah um that was never something that i had wanted to do but just because a lot of the you know we could break up and then if we're married it's a whole big thing like a whole fiasco I right get I but get we that. could we could stay together forever and not be married yeah and what's the diff you know yeah. but after after being with him for as long as I have so far, I I am coming around to marrying him. I think, like the I idea think I of what that would look like. Yeah, I would. I would marry Tim. Oh. And I I tell him sometimes I'm like, because he's he's still unsure if we're gonna get oh, married. Sure. You know, we've only been I mean, dating two and a half years. Right. But I'm like, I know. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> I know. I'm a cancer son. I know. <laughs> listen honey i am intuitive and we're getting married so sometimes i'll be like hey we're gonna get married <laughs> and he's uh, like okay <laughs> okay we will it's so funny <laughs> oh my gosh that's precious and like i never i never wanted kids i mean i'm not too keen on kids because i'm like i want to spend yeah. my money on me and yeah. i want to have me time yeah. And I want to travel and have to worry about another human being. That is a hundred percent the thing. Yeah. But Tim, Tim was like, I want a baby. Like he wants a baby one day. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> uh, all right. I guess, I guess we're having a baby. I guess I have to think about what that would look like for me. <laughs> yeah. Was yeah. Like, I, so I guess we're, I'm coming around to that idea too. And I, we're just going to adopt. Cause I told him, I'm like, I'm not. I'm not one of the birthing fathers. I right. can't do that. We, oh my gosh, that, that's going to, we have to talk about that. That's going to be a good episode. We'll do that episode in the future for sure. Oh yeah. When is Kayla going to get pregnant? What? <laughs> Just, uh, we'll talk about it all in that episode for sure. Oh my God. I love a tape when we were like, Kayla, <laughs> when Kayla. are you going to get pregnant? <laughs> Oh my gosh, me and Kayla, I would love to become a father. It's a whole thing, like obviously that looks a lot different for trans people. And uh, we'll do an episode on it. And I'll oh my share God. my thoughts <gasps> on that. That means that since as long as we have this podcast, like 
that's going to be a thing. Like, we're going to be able to, oh my God, when Kayla gets pregnant, we're going to be like, <gasps> be able to like podcast about it. Oh, I'm going to be an uncle. It's going to be a thousand percent, a thousand percent. And it's going to be great. No, I, uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm so excited. We, we definitely want to be parents and we definitely want to be parents sooner rather than later we're uh, we're pretty settled in like you know we we waited a long time five and a half years and i've known her for 10 10 years yeah so so we we're pretty settled in yeah yeah absolutely that's amazing i can't wait can't wait to have like a little baby kayla i'm also not one of those people that can carry that's not gonna that's not something that i could do as much as i would love to uh, if I was pre-T and had the money, I would have saved my eggs. Um, yeah. But I did not have the money pre-T to do that and to store them until I was ready. Which, right. You know, a lot of financial, pe- it's like not an option for a lot of people financially. Yeah. Um, right. Testosterone was uh, needed for me. So I started testosterone and um, yeah, and it just, it just further got further out of out of reach for me yeah right it's just not for me for sure but i would love to uh i would love to have a baby with kayla and you know for us to have a child together and have her carry our child and uh, yeah. i want to like play guitar and everything like it's just it's gonna be amazing i can't wait hey, we'll tell you. guitar dad aaron yeah. in tennessee dad aaron <laughs> get out of here <laughs> oh my gosh yes that'll be it well, this episode was fun. So fun. I feel like this was perfect. This is what we needed. I'm actually, my plans for the rest of the evening are actually to go pick up Mariah, who is oh. now not three, no, four. Now she's 10. She's 10. So she's grown a little bit. And she's going to come spend the night and do a citywide scavenger hunt with us tomorrow. Oh. We've got this like local festival thing going on. So we're going to take her and, um, yeah, we're going to go have some fun. And me and Bo are going to already start thinking about our next episode because that's going to be really fun. Yeah. We've got a few I things in mind. So make sure you guys are uh, subscribing, following us wherever you listen to us at YouTube, podcast, YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts, wherever you listen to Spot Podcasts at. If you don't <laughs> know what Trans Tape is, you need to figure that out. Stat. Um, Trans Tape.life. Trans Tape.life. Uh, it's a binder alternative, a safer chest binder alternative, in my opinion, in my experience. And um, and me and Bo and Kayla all work there together. And mm-hmm. you guys just check us out. You'll see what we mean. And um, yeah, thanks for listening to our episode, you guys. We appreciate you guys being here and we like making this stuff. And we I, love you. We love you guys. You guys are genuinely the whole reason why we do all that we do, like throughout oh, our yeah. work day, throughout our after work day, like it's in the evenings, like all day we think about content for you and we'll make things easier on you because I genuinely believe that if more people are educated, it will save more people's lives and make other people a little bit less hateful for people that are trans in today's society. So educate Amen. yourselves, educate others. Be good to yourselves, be good to others, and we will see you in the next episode. Bye. Peace.